I-16 property plant and equipment. Subsequent recognition, day-to-day -day servicing costs, regular replacements. This is a summary of the total content of I-16. Accounting treatment comprises recognition, measurement and disclosure. This presentation focuses on recognition and specifically subsequent recognition. Subsequent recognition refers to costs incurred relating to an item of property, plant and equipment subsequent to initial recognition. Every time these costs are incurred, you have to evaluate it against the recognition criteria in I-16. These subsequent costs incurred refer to day-to-day -day servicing, regular replacement and major inspections. Paragraph 12. Under the recognition principle in paragraph 7, an entity does not recognize in the carrying amount of an item of property, plant and equipment the costs of the day-to-day -day servicing of the item. Rather, these costs are recognized in profit or loss as incurred. Cost of day-to-day -day servicing are primarily the cost of labor and consumables and may include the cost of small parts. The purpose of these expenditures is often described as for the repairs and maintenance of the item of property, plant and equipment. In summary, subsequent costs for day-to-day -day servicing may not be capitalized to the property, plant and equipment. It is profit or loss as incurred as repairs and maintenance. Paragraph 13. Parts of some items of property, plant and equipment may require replacement at regular intervals. For example, a furnace may require relining after a specified number of hours of use. Or aircraft interiors, such as seats and galleys, may require replacement several times during the life of the airframe. Items of property, plant and equipment may also be acquired to make a less frequent recurring replacement, such as replacing the interior walls of a building or to make a non-recurring replacement. Again, under the recognition principle, always going back to the principle, an entity recognizes in the carrying amount the cost of the replacing part of such an item when that cost is incurred, if the recognition criteria are met. Important. However, the carrying amount of those parts that are replaced is derecognized in accordance with the derecognition provisions of this standard. Let's summarize that. Subsequent expenditure, subsequent costs to replace existing components of an existing item of property, plant and equipment. You recognize in the carrying amount the cost of the replacing such a component. It already meets the definition of PPE because it has already been capitalized in the original asset. But very importantly, to prevent overstatement of this PPE item, you have to de-recognize the carrying amount of the component that is replaced. So two things need to happen. You recognize the cost of the new component, but you also have to de-recognize the carrying amount of the replaced component. This derecognition of the replaced component. This will be very easy if you did identify this component separately on initial recognition and you've depreciated it separately over its own useful life. Then it will be quite simple to derecognize that little carrying amount. But what are you going to do if you did not identify and measure this replaced part separately? you still need to de-recognize something. You cannot keep on 
capitalizing and capitalizing and capitalizing onto the carrying amount of a property, plant and equipment without de-recognizing something, something. How do you now determine this carrying amount that you have to be to de-recognize? You calculate what we call a deemed carrying amount. You use the cost of the replacement as an indication of what the cost of the replaced part was at the time it was initially recognized. That would then be your deemed carrying amount that needs to be de-recognized. How does de-recognition look like? When do you de-recognize? On disposal of an asset or when no future economic benefits are expected. What we're currently busy with is the de-recognition of a component. Normal asset realization account that you are familiar with. You de-recognize the asset's cost. You de-recognize the asset's accumulated depreciation. When you're selling this asset, you have an entry to the bank and you have a resultant profit or loss. When you are de-recognizing a component and you're not selling that replaced component, it is no longer usable, your asset realization account would be similar to this. There will just be a little bit of a difference. You will not have this item. You will not have a bank entry. You will only de-recognize the cost of the component, the accumulated depreciation of the component, and that will then lead to a loss on de-recognition. Let's look at an example. We have an aircraft with main components engine with a cost of 6 million, seats with a cost of 2 million, and galley with a cost of 3 million, separate components. The seats are depreciated on the straight line method over a period of five years. So that gives you 2 million over five years is 400,000 rand depreciation per year. Let's now assume that at the end of year four, the seats are in such a bad condition that they have to re be replaced at a cost of 5 million. Let's look at the journal entries. Two things is happening. You have to recognize the new component, but you cannot add on and add on and add on to the carrying amount. You have to de-recognize something. So what will we do? How would we de-recognize? You have to de-recognize the cost of 2 million. You have to de-recognize the accumulated depreciation of 1.6 million, which is 4 years 400,000 per year, and you have a resultant loss on write down going through profit or loss of 400,000. That is the first thing that needs to happen. You need to de recognize the carrying amount of the replaced part. Secondly, you have to recognize the new component's cost with a debit to costs, 5 million, and a credit to either bank or other payables, 5 million.